I guess long ago when I was a graduate student, we sometimes heard the word aesthetics, but it completely dropped out of, of the, the currency of the field of art history. I don't know, 20, 30 years, and it's it's like a rubber band. Like it's really hit us again with a, a real lasting force. I, I one day just said. Uh, aesthetics is critical reflection on art, culture, and nature. And to whomever I said it, the response was, okay, that's what I do, right? And that I've used it ever since. And what the troubling but interesting thing is nobody's ever asked me what I mean by that, exactly, just because... What's critical reflection? Yeah, they, they self-identify... just reflection, right? Right, but somehow that, that, the combination of the fact that it's more than just art, that it's culture and nature too, yeah. so that's broader, the fact that it's reflection that could sound ideological, that's what some people worried about, so the critical offset that, other people didn't, so pe I don't know what people were hearing about, but the last time around I didn't really want to raise the critical questions of people because I had, it took me a long time to get to that point, but I used the same characterization this time and again people seemed very comfortable with it, so, you know, we talked to people in, you know, we have a section on neuroaesthetics, that's something that um, you know, there were things we didn't have in the first edition that we could have but just didn't know about or... But neuroaesthetics didn't, uh, for the most part, exist right. 16 years right. ago, right? So why, why are people in neuroscience, right? It's, it's not that there are some aestheticians or art historians, whatever, going interested in neuroscience. But it, the, the real interesting thing is that neuroscientists have found it uh, important for them to think about aesthetics.